All right, again, thank you everyone for joining us. We are here to talk about giving day strategy for the Kitsap Great Give. Um, <clears throat> my name is Bethany. I am the vice president of our community team here at Mighty Cause. We are the technology platform that is partnering with the Kitsap Community Foundation, uh, who is the host of this event. We're joined today by Shane, Melissa, and Gretchen from the foundation. Um, I will pause for a moment. If any of you want to chime in and say a quick hello, we'll be hearing a little bit from Shane uh, later on uh, on today's webinar, uh, but we're joined by the Community Foundation team as well. Yep, um, I will say hi. This is Shane here with Kitsap Community Foundation, who can't figure out how to change my profile picture on here. Um, <laughs> so I will work on that. But anyways, we are delighted that you guys are all with us today. And uh, as we kick off our 10th year of the Kitsap Great Give, which is crazy. So really happy to <laughs> here. Thanks, Shane. I'll just have a little shout out. Hello, good afternoon. Hope you guys are all having a good lunch. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, this is Melissa Luatua, and I am happy to be here 10 years with the Kids at Great Give. I have not been here 10 years. That's not me. It's 10 years for the Kids at Great Give. Um, but we're happy to be here, happy to see all of the the organizations, new organizations, and we're grateful for Mighty Cause. So thank you, Bethany. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. And again, you'll be hearing more from the foundation uh, later in the training, uh, and they may be helping answer some questions if they do come in during training today. So happy to be joined by their team. Um, and just a little bit of a, a preview of what you can expect on this training today. We're going to start with a reminder on some of the basics about the campaign and the great give. And we're going to do a quick refresher on some of the platform basics. We did previously host a getting started webinar that was a much deeper dive on how to use the platform as the platform is new this year. Um, so if you didn't previously check out that training or if you're looking for a reminder or a fresh or a refresher on something we don't cover today, please head to the nonprofit toolkit and make use of that first webinar because it is a much deeper dive, a walkthrough of the dashboard where you can find everything. We'll do a little bit of a refresh today, but there's much more information on that first webinar. And we're gonna spend most of our time today talking about campaign strategies. So uh, how can you make best use of the tools on the platform and your strategy off platform to make this giving event a successful uh, effort for your nonprofit. And finally, we'll end with some Q&A. So again, please feel free to type into the Q&A section of the Zoom control panel if you have questions throughout, and we'll make some time at the end to answer those questions. Uh, some of the basics about the Giving Day. Um, hopefully, this is all familiar to you, but for anybody that's uh, relatively newer to the campaign, either your organization is new or you as an individual are new to your organization's uh, Great Give campaign. It's hosted by the Kitsap Community Foundation uh, in partnership with United Way of Kitsap County, 24-hour Giving Day. Um, and as, as has already been mentioned, uh, to, this is the 10th year, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, raising 14 million in that time, no small amount for the local community. Um, early giving starts April 1st. So donations will not be open on the platform until that time, but starting April 1st, donations will be open and they will count for the event. And of course, April 11th is when the big day is here. So make sure you mark your calendar for those two key dates if you haven't already. Um, Gretchen, Shane, anything you want to mention on uh, the sponsors? Um... Yeah, I will. Um, so as many of you know, Kids Up Community Foundation goes out into the community all throughout the year to try and raise money for the sponsorship because it takes money to put on these events. Uh, we have a mailer that goes out throughout the community that is uh, wildly um successful, but it costs a lot of money to print it and mail it. And we like to give out prizes and we want to be able to provide a bonus, a little, a little boost in, uh, to match what, to, to boost what your donors are giving. So you'll see this list of sponsors, lots of places. 
please, when you see them, tell them thank you for sponsoring The Great Give and how much it means to you and your nonprofit organization, because without them, there would be no prizes and there would be no mailer and there would be no bonus dollars. So we're, we're in, incredibly grateful. And if you ever have anybody else who you think, oh, so-and-so should sponsor this, please feel free to send them our way and we will connect. So yeah, thanks. Great, thank you. So I already mentioned this uh, earlier, but again, uh, this year is the first year partnering with Mighty Cause as the technology platform that uh, works behind the scenes to support the Kids Have Great Give. So Mighty Cause is very excited to have the opportunity to partner with the Community Foundation and support all of you wonderful nonprofits and the amazing work that you do with our technology and customer support. Um, in case you haven't noticed yet, anybody who was on the previous platform, we did do a migration of your data. So most of your profile content should have carried over from the previous platform, as well as your donation history. So maybe this is an area you haven't fully explored yet, but it, when it comes time to really dig into your campaign strategy this year, your outreach strategy, um, please know that your previous three years of donation history are still existing and accessible to you throughout your um, it, through your account on Mighty Cause, even though those donations were made on the previous platform. So you will need to filter your donations report by default when you go to your donations report, it's just gonna show you the previous 30 days, but make sure you filter to last year, the year before, et cetera. Um, that way you can grab that donor data and plan special communications for those prior, um, prior donors. Um, and we'll cover some of the new features and functionality today that you have on this new platform. Um, and again, if you missed our first training, there was a much deeper dive on all things of the new platform, where to find everything. So feel free to go back and um, review that if you missed that or if you're looking for a refresher. So quick overview uh, of some of how you will navigate the platform. Uh, every nonprofit organization that is part of Kitsap Great Give has a dashboard in your account. And so I'm just gonna walk through high level, the key items that you'll see in that dashboard and what you can manage in each place on your dashboard. First at the very top is the overview screen. This is where your organization, every time you come to the platform and you click on your user menu in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, click on your nonprofit's dashboard, you as an administrator will always be taken to your overview. This is kind of like your welcome to the platform. It's got your to-do list that you can walk through, will confirm your registration status that you are approved for the Kids Hat Great Give, any announcements that the community foundation team wants to share about, you know, information, resources, et cetera. Um, that's what you will see. Please know your donors cannot, won't ever be getting to your overview screen. That's something just for you as an administrator. Uh, so that's kind of the information that can be there on your overview. Your organization page, this is the profile. This is uh, what you'll customize. This is the URL that you will share with donors. This is a place where they can go to make their gift. We'll talk a little bit about some of the customization options you have there. Um, but that organization page is really the profile that you will customize and share for donors to make their gift. Fundraising tools folder on your dashboard has a lot of fundraising tools, uh, additional amplification tools, some of which we'll talk about today, including peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools, matching grant tools, uh, donation widget that you can embed on your website. Um, there are additional amplification tools available in that fundraising tools folder. Next, you'll see reports. And just like the name says, this is where you're going to get all of your data. Uh, so you'll have a donations report, which it's going to cover all donations. You can filter in a number of different ways. As I mentioned earlier, you can refer back to previous years of donation history. You'll see some information on screen, but when you download, you'll get the full detail 
full transaction detail for every donation. This is always going to be updated in real time throughout the um, campaign. Uh, the checkout folder on your dashboard, this is where you can customize the checkout experience. So everything from setting custom donation levels for your uh, giving page, as well as previewing the receipt and the thank you page and adding some customizable text uh, to, to personalize the, that thank you experience for your nonprofit. And finally, your settings. This is where you'll do things like add other administrators, make sure your direct deposit information is set up. Uh, if you need to change your in, any information about your nonprofit, either your legal address or name, to change the legal name and address, you'll need to submit documentation via the settings uh, page for that to be updated. If you want to change your display name or display address, that you can do uh, right there. So lots of tools available for you in settings. So customizing the profile. Again, we're not going to walk through in full detail all of the functionality on your profile. Um, they're great uh, support articles that walk you through all of the things that you can do, but it's going to be on page editing for your organization profile page. Anywhere you see a pencil icon is your key that you can make an edit there. <clears throat> this again is the page that you're going to share primarily with your supporters. So you want to make sure that it tells an exciting and impactful story about why the donor should give. Um, you have options for branding. You can customize the theme color, make sure it aligns with your logo, have a nice powerful image right there at the top. Um, and in the kind of story section of this page, you can tell a dynamic story. It doesn't just have to be text. You can have formatting, photos, videos, links, uh, all kinds of great stuff to again, continue telling that story that hopefully you start in your email or on social media about why donors should give or what the impact of your organization's campaign will be. Start that in your email, make sure that's represented on your profile page, as well as in the thank you experience, et cetera. Uh, one piece of the profile page I did just want to call out as a refresher is the metrics and giving activity. So you have the option if you'd like to add a progress bar or a goal for your Kids App Great Give campaign on your profile page. So you don't have to have a goal, but it certainly is recommended, uh, especially with a campaign like this. It's always helpful for donors to be able to visualize a specific tangible thing that your organization is trying to accomplish. And then it gives you guys something to talk about in your emails, show progress towards that goal. So we encourage you to add a goal. You can change that goal at any time. If you have the great um, problem of meeting your goal halfway through the giving day, you can increase that goal, You know, bump it up to a stretch goal, for example. So you can add a goal progress bar to your page. You can also choose what metrics you'd like to display on the page, whether you're just looking at dollars or donors. Um, so you'll want to make sure that your metrics are showing uh, to calculate from April 1st, which is the day that early giving starts, uh, as I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> and finally, a little bit lower down on the page, there is a giving activity feed that you can optionally enable. Uh, and this is a really nice way to, um, to show the uh, social proof of giving to your nonprofit. So when somebody makes a gift, as long as they don't request that their name or donation amount is hidden, then their name and gift amount will show in this giving activity feed on your page. So um, again, if they request for their information to be hidden, it won't be shown there. Uh, but if they don't, this is a nice way to show those donors a little love, but also show other visitors to your page uh, that there's giving happening uh, to your nonprofit. So we talked a little bit about reports, but uh, to dig in deeper, um, every time a donation is made to your nonprofit, you, any the, anyone that's listed as an administrator will receive an automated email notification, letting them know a donation has been made. If you don't want to, or if there's somebody on your team that's an administrator but doesn't need to receive an email for every single donation, that's something that you or they can control in their own user account. 
uh, in your user profile, there are email settings and you can toggle off donation notifications. But by default, any administrator will receive an email whenever a donation is made. But you can always come into this report, again, from the report section of your nonprofit dashboard to get real-time data. And it will be all the information about uh, the donation, address, email, dollar amount, etc. cetera. Um, as I mentioned already, you can get historical information from the previous platform. Um, if you're not seeing it when you first go to your reports, it's likely because it's defaulted to the previous 30 days. So you want to use one of these filters that you're seeing at the top of this screen to either select a specific date range, a type of donation, or a campaign type. In campaign type, you will be able to filter by a previous giving event, i.e. Kitsap Great Give 2021, for example. Offline donations. This is something that might look a little bit different on the platform than it did in previous years. So want to make sure that we mentioned this. For any offline donations to be uh, counted or eligible as a part of this event, the donations must be sent directly to the Kitsap Community Foundation and the check must be received by their team by April 11th and they will process getting it added to the website. You will see different than you might have seen in the past. You will see an option in your donations report to add an offline gift. You technically have this ability and that can affect the <clears throat> metrics that you see on the front of your profile page. But please know any offline donation that you may add to your page directly will not be counting for the event or for leaderboard totals all offline donations that are to be counted for the event and eligible have to go through the foundation. Can I just um, add one thing on that, Bethany, which is that is very similar to, that's exactly how we've done it in all the prior years. So that's not a change. Great, yes. The only change and the reason we called it out is because you may see the option in your profile, in your dashboard to add an offline donation and we wanted to make sure that you were all aware that doing that doesn't change this addition, you know, this process that has been in place in the past. Um, moving on to the checkout flow. So I mentioned a little bit earlier, your nonprofit has lots of opportunity to customize the checkout flow for your donors. This is your chance to, again, make sure that from start to finish, email to profile page to checkout page to thank you, all throughout that process, you're telling a consistent story about the impact of your work, the impact of this campaign. Um, you have the ability to also choose what, what data you are collecting from donors. Um, so uh, most importantly on this page, you can do things like change the suggested donation levels to, to you know, 50, 100, 250, 500. Um, you can choose what are the, what are the custom suggested levels for your donors. And you can add a label, uh, an impact description to go alongside those. So helping donors see the impact of a $50 donation or a $100 donation to your organization, for example. Um, you can also choose if, if you'd like to make designations available uh, for your non for your donors, uh, excuse me, you can enable that and choose what the designation options should be. Um, so really, it's just a way that you can both preview the donation experience uh, so you can see exactly what it will look like for donors when they get to your donation page and also customize it with some of those key areas that I mentioned. Post-checkout, uh, so the thank you experience, uh, you have two different places that you can uh, customize. The first is a thank you page. This is what donors will see on screen when they make a donation, when they complete their donation to your organization. Uh, so just like on the profile page, you'll have a free form editor to tell a thank you story. You can add a video, a photo, uh, a personalized message. Again, reinforcing um, what they just made their gift to, where, where, your, where the funds from the Kitsap Great Give will be going to. <clears throat> so you can build out that thank you page and you can click to see a preview of exactly what that will look like. And you also have the ability to add a custom message that goes into the automated receipt. 
So when a donor makes their gift on the Kitsap Great Give, a tax receipt will automatically be sent to that donor. So you don't need to issue a tax receipt. Uh, we of course encourage you to follow up with additional thank you um, as you know, there's no such thing as saying thank you too many times. Um, but one way that you can say thank you is by inserting a custom message that will get added to that automated tax receipt. So by customizing this thank you page and adding a message into that donation receipt, you have two kind of immediate post-donation stewardship opportunities to say thank you to your donors. And then it's up to you how you go above and beyond past the campaign to say thank you, whether it's a month later, two months later, circling back to talk about the impact of what you've been able to accomplish with the funds that you raised. <clears throat> Finally, on the actual kitsapgreatgive.org website, there is a nonprofit toolkit with tons of great resources and more coming soon. That's where the previous webinar training is available. That's where this Webinar training will be added after today's uh, training. There's gonna be other tips, resources, graphics, a strategy and marketing workbook, uh, and again, more graphics coming soon. So make sure that you check out that toolkit and make use of it as much as possible to help uh, streamline your campaign strategy. All right, so now we're going to switch into the primary focus of today's webinar, which is walking through a handful of key strategies that we encourage you to consider and implement for this year's Giving Day campaign. You don't have to do all of these, um, although a great campaign may consider all of these, um, but this is really meant to um, encourage you to consider what of these strategies make the most sense to uh, employ with your campaign this year. Uh, first is going to be goal setting. Uh, this is something, of course, we encourage every nonprofit to do. Uh, next is securing a matching grant. Uh, this is a critical way to um, add success, impact to any fundraising campaign you have ever. Uh, matching grants are exciting. It's like a deal, a bonus to your, you know, to your donors. Uh, so we'll talk about some options, some tools you have in the platform um, and hopefully encourage you all to see if there are any partners in your existing network uh, that can offer a match specifically for your nonprofit to help amplify your campaign. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is always something that we encourage nonprofits to consider for a giving day. Whether you do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising outside of your giving day campaign on a year-round basis or not, a giving day can be a really nice focused way to try and add this um, new channel, new strategy to your efforts. Talk a little bit about your general marketing strategy for the Great Give with a focus on donor retention. Uh, for, for those of you particularly that have participated in Kitsap Great Give in the past, um, but really all nonprofits that have any donors that have given to your organization in previous years, uh, you should have a specific donor retention strategy. So starting with goal setting, of course, some of this may feel um, may feel obvious, but it's it's worth mentioning uh, that any campaign that's going to go well uh, needs to start with goal setting. And that can really look different for different nonprofits. Maybe it's a dollar amount. Maybe it's a donor goal. Maybe it's a new donor goal. Maybe it's um, a goal to launch publicly a new program that you are, uh, your nonprofit is offering. It may not always just be, you know, a, a strict dollar amount goal, but making sure your internal team is really clear about what is the goal, what is the key focus. That way, when you're crafting your messaging for your emails and social media, designing your profile page, you can make sure that you're kind of tying back to that key goal. And then after the campaign, when you're looking back to assess the success, um, you're looking at that same key indicator that you all kind of agreed to was the real focus. Um, early giving starts April 1st, and of course, uh, goes through the giving day on the 11th. Um, so 11 days, uh, 11 days or 12, I guess, uh, of giving, um, you'll want to 
find a way to create a strategy that lasts that full time that doesn't look like pushing hard with emails every single day, because then by the time April 11th comes around, your donors might be a little exhausted and fatigued. So what does, what does your plan look like? What does your communication schedule look like? But also, how are you going to kind of set goals or add focuses through that time period um, to keep you moving towards your overall goal? Um, and sharing those goals, whether they're, you know, mini goals or your goal for the whole campaign, like you can do, you know, like you can add to your profile, can be really helpful in getting your supporters and your donors on board with what you're trying to accomplish. Use it to keep it interesting, make it exciting, uh, so that by the 11th, your donors are still wanting to open your emails and uh, read the social media posts that they're seeing about your organization. So matching grants, um, I mentioned a little bit, this is one of the key strategies that we'll be talking about today. And one of the easiest and most important ways for a nonprofit to increase their success in a giving day. Um, you know, it, it's, it's very clear and obvious. People like to, people like to see their money go farther, whether it's, you know, buying things for their own family uh, or in making a gift. They want their money to go farther. And so a match really helps to allow a donor to have more impact with less dollars that they have to donate. So um, <clears throat> kind of really boiling down the strategy into three key steps. First step is gonna be to prospect. Um, look at who in your existing network might be available to offer a match. Now. We're just about at March and the campaign starts in April. So you don't have a really long lead time to start um, you know, prospecting and cultivating a brand new donor that has no relationship with your nonprofit. So for this year, you'll want to probably focus on your existing network, board members, major donors that give a big gift to your nonprofit each year. Maybe that gift doesn't happen as a part of the great give. It might happen later in the year but you might talk to them about moving that gift earlier in the year so that you can use it as a match for the great give. Um, corporate sponsors, again, focus on your existing network for this year, but now is a great time to be thinking about how can you start developing relationships for future years uh, that you might be able to call on. Um, obviously the cultivation process, will look different depending on who the prospect is, um, but that's really your chance to learn about that prospect. What do they care about? What, what matters to them? Uh, for a corporate partner, they may have a lot more interest in the marketing um, benefits to a match opportunity. So you'll wanna talk to them about where you can add their logo and how you can share information with your supporters about what they, you know, how the support they're providing your nonprofit. Uh, a board member or a major donor likely has different, um, different reasons for making their gift, making their match. Maybe the board member's goal is to um, meet their, um, you know, give get requirements for the year. Or a major donor is just very committed to your mission. And what's the story that will appeal to them is that you can have a bigger impact, you can raise more. So the cultivation period is really your chance to learn about the motivation of the prospect and, and what's gonna matter most to them. And once you've learned that, then you can craft your specific match ask based on what you think is gonna matter to that specific prospect. Again, it is not too late to add a match to this year's campaign. You'll likely wanna focus on your existing network, um, but, don't be daunted or intimidated that it's too late to do that for this year. And, and don't uh, sell yourself short by thinking a small match isn't worth adding. Any match is useful. And you might get a couple of smaller matches from a few individuals. You can choose to keep that as you know two or three different matches at different points in your campaign, or you can roll them all up into one larger amount depending on your strategy and what makes most sense. Once you secure the match, um, of course, you'll wanna promote the match, make the match work for you. 
Um, you have the ability to add that match into the platform onto your profile page to really maximize the impact that you can receive. So I mentioned earlier, you can find this in the fundraising tools folder of your dashboard under matching grants. And when you post a match in the platform, you'll see your donate button has this fun little tile that tells donors there's a matching grant live. There is a larger indicator on this page that explains the match, can have the logo of your matching sponsor if they happen to have a logo. You can tell details of the match and this will count down in real time as the event is uh, happening. Um, and it'll show donors how much is left in the match and how much time is left. So it adds additional urgency and excitement to your page. Um, your organization will also be able to be found by a, a special search filter. Um, if donors come and they just wanna see causes that have a match um, and in the search, your nonprofit will have an extra kind of highlighted indication that there is a match available. So there's a lot of different ways that adding a match to your profile page helps to give additional visibility and excitement uh, for your organization's presence in the platform. And then of course, you'll wanna make sure that off platform in your email campaigns, in social media, you're letting donors know about your match, letting them know about progress towards your match. Maybe even doing things like, instead of just saying, give now as your call to action button, change it to double your gift or triple your gift, whatever it might be. Um, again, to keep it exciting, different, uh, interesting for your donors. Within the platform, there is a lot of flexibility in how you set up a match. And so in this year one, um, I'm gonna focus mostly on uh, the most standard options that are available. Um, but I just want you to know that as you know, as you get more comfortable and maybe you're a nonprofit that knows you have a lot of matching support uh, that you can lean on, you have multiple matching donors, or you have a lot of dollars you can put into this, you might want to um, use some of the advanced tools this year. Um, but when you go into the platform to add a match to your page, you can choose the start and end time. So it can start at the beginning of early giving and go through the end of the event. Or maybe you just have a match that's only available on the 24 hours of April 11th. Uh, maybe you limit the match to just a specific hour of the day. Um, whatever works for you and helps you drive giving with your donors, you can choose the start and end time of each match that you set up. You can choose to queue matches with each other. So let's say you are lucky enough to get two or three matching grants. You can set your first matching grant to start on the first day of early giving and set your second and third matches to automatically unlock, become available when your first one is met. Uh, so you're kind of pre-building this system of matches that will just kick in automatically as the campaign rolls on. You have the ability to choose if these match totals show in your page metrics or not. You can choose whether offline donations will count in uh, against your match. There's lots of different match options to choose from. The most common um, will be a one-to-one, 100% one, dollar-for-dollar match. So you have a $5,000 match, and um, when you raise $5,000 on your page, that will become, uh, that match amount is uh, available. You can make matches conditional so that, you know, you only unlock the match when you receive the full 5,000 or as you get donations in, you're unlocking part of the match amount. Um, you can do a two to one match, a three to one match. You can even do matches based on, you know, reaching a hundred donors for your campaign or 50 donations. There's lots of flexibility. Again, not to overwhelm you, most nonprofits will stick to the one to one dollar amount match, but feel free to explore the tool uh, and see if there isn't a different type of match that either might appeal more to the matching donor or might align better with the goal that you're trying to reach. If, for example, your campaign's goal is really centered around donors, unique donors, 
you might want your match amount to be based on reaching a certain number of donors um, so that your messaging can really feel consistent. Uh, you'll be able to review any details on upcoming or past matching grants and download a report of all donations that were included or eligible for an existing match that you set up. Just to call out one uh, specific item on the setup in particular, uh, I mentioned already you have the ability to choose whether or not you'd like to include your match value in your page metrics. Uh, most matching donors will likely pay their match to your organization offline. Maybe they'll give you a check directly um, or, you know, however, they may work out directly with your nonprofit to pay their match. If that's the case, we recommend that you leave this checkbox included so that your profile page can really represent what you're raising in the campaign as well as the match that you're going to be securing through some offline method. If you think that your matching donor is actually going to make their donation via credit card on the platform, you'll want to uncheck that box so that they can make their gift on the platform and there won't be any unnecessary double counting of their match amount. So that's the key decision point for your nonprofit um, if they're going to pay their match online, which again, they absolutely don't have to and the majority of matching donors likely won't, but it's an option if they'd like to do it, they can. You'll just want to be cautious of that checkbox in the match setup so that you don't overcount your match metrics. So moving on to our next strategy to talk about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, there's lots of tools in the platform to make the most of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. But before we talk about that, just a quick note on why you should consider peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, hopefully many of you have tried this in the past, uh, but I know we hear all the time from nonprofits that feel a little daunted and overwhelmed by having to ask for something more for your donors to do. Um, but there's a lot of great reasons that you should consider activating ambassadors to fundraise on your behalf. The most common, you know, most exciting reasons really are uh, that you can reach new donors. Uh, you only have a certain number of donors in your database that you can reach out to. But if you activate some of your supporters to reach out to their network, you have the ability to reach new people that you don't have contact information for. Um, so it'll amplify any of your traditional outreach, help you raise more. Um, but two of the other kind of benefits that are, are lesser um, considered, I think, is that you really have the ability to cultivate a stronger relationship with that individual that chooses to do a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. They're now not just a donor, they're not just a supporter, they're, they're almost coming in to the inner circle of your nonprofit because they're going to become an advocate for your organization. So it's a great way to have a stronger relationship with that individual supporter, and it'll give you the ability to capture and share their personal impact story. So why are they choosing to become the peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? How have they personally or their family or their community or their neighborhood or whatever it might be, how have they been impacted by the work of your nonprofit? And it's always uh, exciting to have additional stories to tell uh, about the impact of your work. Uh, you're often sharing about the impact of your work from your nonprofit's perspective, but allowing peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to tell their own story uh, gives you more to work with, gives you more to share that really personalize um, you know, the impact of your work. So kind of your basic strategy to, to activate peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, you're first going to want to identify people that make sense to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for your nonprofit. Not every donor or supporter you have is going to make sense for this ask. You'll want to identify people that are most close and committed to your work. So of course, board members, always a great place to start. Uh, volunteers, they've already given their time and energy freely to your nonprofit. Um, so they're a, a great potential um, supporter to consider your staff. Again, they've, they've, they give all of their time to your nonprofit. Uh, so they're a good uh, candidate to consider. Uh, program alumni um, or people that have been served by your programming in one way or another. That of course looks different for every nonprofit depending on your mission. 
Um, but there, there might be an audience there that makes sense. So identify the individuals that make the most sense. Um, and then you'll want to do whatever you can to make it feel easy for them. Uh, in the platform, you have the ability to create a fundraiser template for them. Basically, you pre-fill and pre-create all of the required fields on their page. You can add a title, a photo, set a goal, and add some basic information about your organization. So all they have to do is click a few buttons, and they have a published page that they can share to accept gifts. Now, they can, of course, choose to customize it and tell their story, and we hope that they do. But some may just want to get their page created as quickly and easily as possible so that they can focus on the outreach side of fundraising. And with that in mind, you'll want to create and prepare and share with them some resources that make that outreach easier. They are not, many of them will not be professional fundraisers. They may not be used to asking for money on behalf of a nonprofit. So giving them some copy they can use, uh, whether it's a sample email that they can just copy and paste, sample language they can put on their social media page, giving them some tips and suggestions, um, helping demystify the process of fundraising for them and make it feel easy for them can really make it uh, make them a lot more successful. And kind of one way that, that we have seen nonprofits really see success with this is by using our team fundraising tool. And so what team fundraising does on the platform is it allows a group of individuals to each have their own fundraising page, but then you have a team page that sort of brings their collective efforts together. Uh, and so that can make it feel easier, more uh, approachable for a fundraiser that's never done it before because they don't feel like they're on their own, but they're a part of this group. Um, and maybe that group is adding competition or incentivizing, um, or maybe it just helps them feel a part of something bigger. Um, <clears throat> you. This team page uh, has a fun leaderboard that is visible on this page. Uh, so if you do have a competitive group, maybe it's um, your six or seven board members each have a page and this leaderboard shows which board member is raising the most or has the most donors that have given to their campaign. Or maybe you have one page for your staff and one page for your board and this leaderboard allows the two of them to compete with each other there's lots of different fun ways that you can you can manage this, but a team fundraising page really just allows um, an additional layer of structure and engagement to your um, to your campaign. Uh, again, there is a template page available as a part of the team so that you can streamline the process and you'll have tools in the platform to send emails to any of those fundraisers that have created a page. So if you do think you're going to have a, a a few, a group of fundraisers, I encourage you to consider the team fundraising tool. Um, but either way, we absolutely encourage you to create a fundraiser template. Uh, if you're going to have any peer to peer fundraisers to uh, help craft that messaging and streamline the onboarding process for them. So now we're going to shift gears and talk a little bit about marketing strategy to sort of close us out today. Um, the three sort of key areas that we're going to focus are email strategy, social media strategy, and then your donor retention strategy in particular. Um, that's likely going to overlap with your email strategy, but it's worth calling out as a special focus. So when you plan your email campaign for the Kits App Great Give, it's helpful to start with uh, kind of a calendar or schedule of what you're going to send when so that you're not um, flying by the seat of your pants on the day of the giving day, figuring out how to craft the messaging for the three o'clock email at 1.30, getting approvals, et cetera. Take the time now to think about what emails do you want to send when and to what audience. Um, ideally, you don't send every email to everybody on your donor list, but you look at how can you segment your audiences um, even just a little bit so that you don't overly complicate your lives. You know, what emails are you gonna to send to those people that gave in last year's Kits App Great Give or have given any year in Kits App Great Give versus individuals that are maybe on your list but have never given before versus recurring donors to your nonprofit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, think about how you can build in segmentation so that you're telling a slightly different, uh, you know, crafting a more, um, 
more specific and tailored message to the group, depending on their engagement with you. Um, Pre-schedule and set up as many as you can in advance. Keep your messages short, sweet, easy to understand. Um, it can be really um, tempting to share lots of information about your organization's impact and all this detail that, that makes a ton of difference to you as a nonprofit in terms of how you run your programming. Um, but really kind of think about how to boil your messaging down to what is going to compel a donor to click that button to make their gift. Uh, and consistency as well. Make sure that you're seeing a consistent message throughout your campaign on the impact of your work and where the dollars will be used. Always make sure there's a clear uh, ask to donate, a very obvious donate button with a link to your profile page. Test your emails on mobile. Um, we haven't talked about it a lot, but the, the platform is uh, fully responsive and optimized for mobile. So the giving checkout experience will work great on mobile, but you'll wanna make sure that your email, which will more often than not be viewed on mobile, is just as easy. Um, it's easy for them to see and click on the donate button uh, from their email on mobile. And if possible, uh, A-B test messaging, you know, subject lines, try, uh, sending at different times of the day, et cetera, to see what really works so that when April 11th comes around, you have the strongest, most impactful strategy to get the most number of donors to open your email and click on the button to actually uh, convert and give to your nonprofit. <laughs> In terms of social media strategy, I know it can feel very overwhelming. There's so many different social media channels and how can you be active on all of them? Um, and that's just not realistic for most nonprofits. Uh, so think about where your audience really lives and where they engage most with you. If most of your activity happens on Facebook, focus there. If most of your followers um, are active on Twitter, focus there. Um, wherever you can, just like with email, pre-schedule posts so that you can feel confident about the amount of content and the cohesion of your content throughout the campaign. And that will allow space on the giving day for you to be interactive and supplemental, respond to comments and likes, share posts that you're seeing your followers uh, tag you in, um, but not creating content. Uh, in some ways, you'll want to be supplementing your content on the giving day. For example, if you're halfway to your match or you meet your match or if you win a prize, um, those are the things that you'll want to add on the day of. Uh, consider if you don't it, it, consider if you have a budget and you want to do any boosted posts. Um, think about what content is going to be most engaging uh, on any of these social media channels. Um, there's going to be a lot of graphics added to the toolkit um, for you to take advantage of, uh, but we always encourage nonprofits to consider Canva as a free design tool. Um, it's really helpful as a non-designer. Um, you can create really nice looking graphics that can uh, help um, really make your emails and social media look more professional and consistent through your campaign. Um, and finally, donor retention strategy. Um, we talked a little bit about this. There is a specific report you have access to in the platform. Uh, again, if you if your organization has participated in the Kitsap Great Give before on the previous platform, you will have uh, information in a donor retention report that in just a few clicks and filters, you can easily target and export a list of donors that gave last year and have not yet given this year. Uh, we we see across all giving days donor retention is is low. It's way lower than um, you might think lower than anybody wants it to be. Um, and so this report is really meant to make the take the guesswork out of improving your donor retention strategy. So in the middle of the giving day, three o'clock, go to your donor retention report and pull a quick list to see who are your biggest donors from last year that haven't yet given. What's your strategy to reach out to them? Are you going to give a quick list to your board chair or your executive director and have them make a few phone calls? Are you going to send emails? How can you recapture those past lapsed donors and get them to come back and give again. So now I'm going to turn it over to Shane, who is going to walk us through a little bit more information about some of the very exciting prize opportunities 
that will help your organization walk away with hopefully some extra funds from this year's campaign on top of using uh, at least some of the strategies we've talked about so far today. Great. Thanks, Bethany. <clears throat> so you guys might remember last year, we um, decided it was really important to make sure that some of the smaller organizations, so organizations with revenue under 100,000, also have similar opportunities to the larger organizations. So uh, when we ask for your, for your annual revenue on registration, that's why. And so one of the prizes, and we continue to add to these prizes. So this is just our initial list. So please keep checking back. But the quick start prize is um, early, or sorry, the organizations that are off to the fastest start between midnight and nine o'clock in the morning. Golden tickets, we do every two hours. I believe it's an extra $250. And so that's just kind of a random. So you could drive all your donors and say, hey, we're going for a golden ticket on the nine to 11 o'clock hour. So please make your donations then. We also have category prizes. I think we have nine different categories. And so again, large and small. And we have a rookie of the year prize. So organizations that are new to the Great Give, both large and small, both get a prize. I think that's the most unique donors. I can't remember off the top of my head. And then the Red Lantern uh, is the, the nonprofits with the most donors, I believe, again, between nine o'clock and midnight. Um, so those are some of the prizes. And we we know we will have some more because just even during this, this webinar, I was like, oh, I have an idea for a prize. And so I was texting Gretchen, I'm like, we should offer this prize. So uh, we'll have a few others and um, just like to like to keep it fun. And if you know of an organization or you know business that wants to sponsor something, the possibilities are endless. Uh, it, it could be an organization wants to sponsor a thousand dollar prize for organizations just in South Kitsap that give, you know, between X amount of hours. So there's, there's tons of different options. So we're happy to work with uh, businesses. If, if you get some other ideas, we are happy to build that out. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Oh, and then I will say too, uh, we, you know, our goal is to raise 5% of boost, uh, the money that Kids Up Community Foundation goes out and looks gets from the sponsors, it's not a match. It's just a, it's a little bit of a boost. Uh, so that is our goal, and um, we'll see. We'll see. We're 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 confident we're going to get there. Um, one of the nonprofits that people can actually give to, if they don't, if, if you have somebody who says, I don't know which nonprofit to give to. The, the bonus pool is also an option for nonprofits um, to share um, and donors can choose the, the bonus pool. And we, we find, you know, often in the mailer, somebody will send in a mailer and they'll say, I don't know who to give it to. So just put it in the bonus pool. And then that way they know that all the nonprofits benefit from that. So I think that's it. And then, um, but let me, can I go back, Bethany? First, we had a couple of questions in the chat. Sure. One was, um, the question was, what format does the report download come in? It looks like a CSV. Correct. And then a second question was, uh, where to find the sample of fundraising templates? And Gretchen, you might be able to answer that better than I can. Yeah, the, the fundraising, um, I see Yvonne's, uh, Yvonne's question there. I'm curious if she means the template for the page template for the team fundraising or for like marketing materials, um, like postcards and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't totally sure okay. about the fundraising template there. Um, that would be a Bethany question, I think. Is there? Yes. If it's, if you're, uh, if the question's about the fundraiser template that I talked about as it relates to peer to peer fundraising. That's something you can access in fundraising tools in your dashboard. There will be a specific um, option within that fundraising tools folder called fundraiser template. And clicking on that allows you to create, you know, pre-fill, what is the title, what is the goal, what is the description and image so that every peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser that creates a page uses that content. So if that's what you're looking for, it's in the fundraising tools on your dashboard. 
Perfect. And then our fundraising um, like templates and things like that that we're going to be uploading are all going to be on the box.com. So the, on the toolkit page, there's a link. I'll put it into the uh, the chat as well um, for the box sync files and lots of different assets there. Great. And um, I will just bring everybody's attention to some key dates that are coming up. Uh, so Monday, March 6th, your organization most likely received an email from Sound Publishing. They're our media sponsor for the Sound Publishing insert. We put in your organization name, your website, and your 10-word description. And then organizations can choose to uh, get a deeply discounted ad space in that insert. So Monday, March 6th is your deadline. So if you... Um, have any questions on that, please reach out to Priscilla at Sam Publishing. We're really grateful for them uh, to provide this opportunity to pull all the information together and it goes out throughout the county in their, in their um, newspapers. And then on Saturday, April 1st, early giving will open. And then Tuesday, April 11th is the giving day. Uh, and then the initial round of disbursements that go through um, Mighty Cause for their electronic funds transfer will occur on Tuesday, April 25th. So I highly encourage you, I, I got an email this morning from somebody said, what's the deadline on the EFT? And I said, the sooner the better, because once it's in there, you don't have to worry about it ever again. Um, if you, if you, for whatever reason, need to still get a check, they just, you know, they will do, it's a $5 processing fee because it is expensive to mail those checks out. So highly encourage the EFT if possible. And then on Thursday, May 25th, we should have all the prizes and offline gifts and uh, the, you know, the boost, the bonus pool will then get distributed to your organizations. Those take a little bit longer to calculate. So that's why it takes a little longer, but we're really excited this year because Previous years, you've had to wait, you know, till early June to get your your funds because we had to wait for the credit card processors to finish finalizing the event. And so with the switch to Mighty Cause, we're able to get you your money sooner, which allows you to keep on doing all the good work you're doing. So I think that's all I've got. Great. Just a couple uh, key reminders here to follow along with the Kitsap Great Give using the hashtag and uh, make sure you're following the Community Foundation uh, across social to stay up to date with uh, all things Community Foundation and about the Great Give. Uh, for customer support, <clears throat> excuse me, the Mighty Cost team is here for any technical support questions you might have, you know, how to update something on your page, how to access a report. Um, please feel free to contact uh, the Mighty Cause customer support team. Uh, the Kitsap Community Foundation team is of course still here to help you and support. Um, if you have more of a question about prizes or anything related to the local campaign or the efforts that the Community Foundation is um, putting forth, you can feel free to reach out to them. But technical questions, we encourage you to reach out to our team, uh, which is fully staffed uh, with members. It will be staffed for 24 hours during the giving day so that we're here to support you and your donors, uh, make sure that we're getting all donations processed um, and, and making that as smooth of a day as possible. And, and, and I have one more question that I yep. got chatted in directly to me, which was the credit card fee. So this year we're using Stripe. Um, so if people use, I think it's Visa, MasterCard, I think it's 2.2 .2 plus 30 cents and American Express, I believe is 3.6 plus 30 cents. Um, and then Bethany, can you talk about the other options in terms of giving um, for bank transfer? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I do think, uh, by the way, Shane, I, I actually don't think it's through Stripe. I think it's processing through the Mighty Cost Charitable Foundation. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, so the Mighty Cost Charitable Foundation is actually uh, kind of the entity that will be receiving and receiving the donations on behalf of donors. Um, it's a donor advised fund that then regrants the funds along to all participating nonprofits. Um, but in using the Charitable Foundation, the options that will be available on um, the donation form are going to be credit card, uh, as Shane just mentioned, PayPal, Apple Pay, 
um, and ACH donations. Um, so we have an integration with um, Plaid, which is uh, integrated with Stripe, as you mentioned, um, Shane. And uh, so donors can uh, initiate a, um, an ACH uh, donation uh, directly from their bank. And there are lower uh, transaction fees that, you know, what typical credit card processing fees are lower when you give via ACH. Um, and uh, the, the fees should be detailed on the um, FAQs page of the website. Uh, I'll ensure that uh, ACH fees are listed out there as well. But if you do have any questions on fees, um, I believe it should be available on the FAQs page of the website. Yep. Thanks for the question. All right. Um, we're right here at the end of the hour. Um, if there are any questions that we didn't get to, um, we can make sure that we follow up with those. Although I think uh, maybe Shane, you caught, um, caught most of them. Uh, so again, if you have other questions, please feel free to reach out either the Mighty Cause customer support team or directly to the foundation. We will post this recording to the toolkit as soon as possible. Um, and thanks for listening along with us today. Yep, and I got one last question, which was the cost is the credit card fees plus the extra to Mighty Cause. It is, it is the fee to Mighty Cause because we need a, a, a robust system with PCI compliance and all the technology. So yes, that's, that's similar to previous years at 3%. So thank you for that question, Beverly. Great. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, good luck with your fundraising. We're excited to uh, kick off this next phase and uh, hopefully, um, you received at least a little bit of inspiration from today's campaign to go off and make an incredibly successful and impactful Kitsap Great Give for your nonprofit. Thank you.